Austria's foreign minister celebrated her wedding earlier this month with a very traditional ceremony in her native region. And a remarkable guest. How did Vladimir Putin come to be there? And did her invitation undermine European diplomacy? It was a spontaneous act of handing over an invitation that had just landed on my desk here on this one the day that President Putin was in Vienna. I took some of the envelopes, took them over to the, uh, to the museum where we had an evening reception with President Putin and I knew that half of the government would be there so I said to myself, well I'll hand it over, it's easier and nicer and I had one envelope in my hand and I was standing next to the president together with my fiancé I said to President Putin, may I introduce you to you, Wolfgang, he's quite a long man, uh, my fiancé, we are both far beyond 50, we are getting married for the first time, and President Putin looked at him and looked at me and he said, this is an interesting lady and you are a man full of courage. <laughs> so in that moment, Wolfgang and myself, we looked at each other and we said, well, maybe share with you an invitation. And the dance? And the dance. Which has was, caused so much comment. I know that the dance has caused, but here we on the continent, we have this good old tradition of sending girls at the age of 16 to dancing schools and boys at the age of 17. And wars dancing with, uh, how do you call that in English, a little bending down in response to the gentleman bending down, then the lady makes her, her Standing down, her curtsy, I think was Cur curtsy. Was a, uh, yes, when you yeah, that is that is the that is the traditional way of ending an, uh, a ceremonial waltz, and that was a ceremonial waltz. Who knows me is very well aware, and my husband is the first one to know that I'm not at all submissive to nobody. Do you worry about the unpredictability of President Trump, and do you, in a sense? feel that one thing you can say for President Putin is that he's a more reliable or predictable partner. I think that the US was made as a country of checks and balances where you all the time have elections, where all the time somebody is campaigning. A lot of what President Trump is doing now or might still do in the next two, three months is happening under the, sh under the shadow of the midterm elections of November. So in here you have a different dynamic than in Moscow where the elections had just happened in March and uh, it's a fact, we all accept it, that President Putin will remain in power uh, until 2024, most probably. So uh, yes, you can say you have more predictability in terms of who is in charge on one side and you have less because that's the way the US is made of. I just wonder whether you see now, for example, in political change, uh, whether it's to the east, uh, Poland or, or Hungary, or whether it's in other countries mm -hmm. uh, like Italy, that actually the centre of gravity might be shifting, that our sense of what European values are might be changing. I regret the departure of Britain uh, because it was always a refreshing, pragmatic actor. Italy, I think it will be less an issue now for adhering or not adhering to the EU by and large, but it will be a lot of soul searching. You have to comply with uh, being a Euro country. And uh, the Hungarian self-perception is one that is, well, uh, we are surrounded by peoples that have nothing to do with us. We come from somewhere else and we have to survive in that. This is a very strong element of their self-perception because the Hungarian language has nothing but nothing to do with the surrounding languages. Moving to other countries in, uh, on the continent, I have paid a visit to many of our counterparts. Uh, you can see old problems remain with us. Yes, they are there.